So exactly what is Elite Dangerous like when using Air Link to stream wirelessly to a Quest 2? Let's take a look. Immersed Robot Hello everyone, welcome to Immersed Robot and in this video I wanted to take a quick look at Elite Dangerous when streaming it to a Quest 2 using the uh, new addition to the latest update to the Quest, uh, Air Link. Now I made a video about Air Link a few days ago uh, just comparing it in terms of uh, latency to virtual desktop and that kind of stuff and just taking a look at a few games to see how it performs and that was quite an interesting experience and it gave me a taste of what Air Link is all about but I wanted to take a look at Elite Dangerous in particular because um, this is just a game I, I play quite often and it's sometimes interesting to see how it compares and contrasts with a wired dedicated PC VR headset that, like the Valve Index which I usually use to play Elite Dangerous. But basically the reason I'm making this video is because it really impressed me. Air Link on the Quest 2 was actually really impressive. Now I say that in terms of just my first impressions with it and how it appeared when I first went in there and um, because it was impressive but there are are a number of things to get into with this as well so just very quickly I wanted to go through some of the pluses and minuses and just try to explain uh, exactly what the experience is like for those who haven't tried it yet or if you're thinking about picking up a Quest 2 to play Elite Dangerous in this way and first of all I'd say yeah it's absolutely a viable way to play Elite Dangerous now the few things that I want to mention regarding this are mainly around sort of image quality overall which is not not bad it's pretty good actually um so the first First thing is really to say that in comparison to the Valve Index, the quality, the actual resolution quality looks lower in the Quest 2. Now obviously it's got to encode the video on the PC, then stream it wirelessly over. You're getting a few little artifacts. Now it comes across as slightly more blurry than the crisp, sharp image that you'll get in a, a Valve Index and similar headsets to that. Um, but it's not terrible and if you compare it directly to something like um, the original Rift CV1 or the original Vive, then actually I'd probably take the image quality in the Quest 2 in what with wireless than I would over one of those headsets. Um, now the other thing that leads me on to my next point actually in terms of black levels because we know that the Valve Index and the Quest 2 they both have LCD screens. Now the original Vive and the Rift CV1 both had OLED screens and with games like Elite Dangerous where black levels can be very important um, the image quality overall can be compromised a little bit when using LCD displays for these types of games because when you look out into space you want it to be as black as possible you know a deep black but you can't really achieve that too well on an LCD screen in comparison to something like an OLED. Now this isn't something that really bothers me too much on the Valve Index but it can certainly I know people can be sensitive to these kinds of things and if you are that kind of person then the Quest 2 this is probably the biggest downside of using a Quest 2 in this particular game when streaming it wirelessly using Air Link, the black levels really aren't that great so it's definitely something to keep in mind if I had one major criticism with using this method to play Elite Dangerous then I would say it's the black levels overall as I say I'm not really too fussed about them overall but in the Quest 2 it did hit me that was one of the first things that did hit me also you know audio as well we know that the built-in audio in the Quest 2 isn't as good as the built-in audio in something like the Valve Index for example but this is sort of a given and there are ways around it you can get some uh, separate headphones and use those with your Quest 2 if you want some you know real immersion in terms of the audio that's always an option to do as well but it's worth mentioning just uh, on the on the base level of what you'll get with a standard Quest 2. So overall those are the main downsides you still get of course you know occasionally you'll get these compression artifacts as well you'll get these sort of distortions in the black levels and stuff like that the colors overall are probably a bit more washed out but if I'm being honest this experience really did impress me um, and I would say you know <laughs> to be honest you're probably getting more or less around sort of 85% of the experience of using a dedicated PC VR headset now these that extra 15% might be important to you it might these black levels for example they might be important to you you don't want this slightly more blurry image than you would otherwise get in something like a, a valve index or another dedicated PC VR headset so these might be important factors for you but I would say personally this to me is sort of 85% of the way there and of course you've not got the cable as well now with a seated experience like Elite Dangerous the cable isn't always an important factor anyway because you don't know 
notice it too much when you're sitting down playing Elite, but it certainly plays a role and it's worth mentioning for people that do want that extra bit of freedom, then you can play without a wire using the Quest 2 and Air Link. And even in this video, when I played Elite using Air Link, you can see that I get up and I wander around in places, just wander around the, the cockpit of the ship. And you can do that with a Valve Index as well, but you, then you've got the cable and it's not, I know it's not an important part of the game, but it was just quite cool to have that level of freedom without having a wire trailing behind me as well. So, so that was an interesting little thing to do as well. So just to wrap up, I would say that if you've not got a dedicated PC VR headset, but you have got a Quest 2 and you're interested in playing Elite Dangerous or you're thinking about playing Elite Dangerous in this way, it's absolutely a viable way to play it. Keeping in mind the small caveats that I've mentioned here, um, but yeah, I think it's a great overall experience. And just quickly as well, the, the latency, because it's a seated experience, you don't use motion controllers, the latency isn't really noticeable. Um, the rotational head movement, you won't notice any latency with that at all because that's it uses asynchronous time warp to correct for that and, and fill in the gaps really. So I had no noticeable latency in terms of head movement at all and I'm you know I'm quite sensitive to latency so that would have been one of the things that had bothered me had it been there but no it's a really great experience um you know will it replace my valve index no it won't because my valve index is where I play elite dangerous anyway and overall it does give me that better experience but there's that's not taking anything away from playing elite in a quest 2 with airlink because it's uh, it's a pretty good experience overall and I can recommend it for people that that want to try it out it's definitely worth doing in that but that's it for this video anyway please do take a moment to subscribe to this channel if you like vr focused content like this and i'll see you next time please consider picking up my science fiction virtual reality focused novel the memory engine a light-hearted tongue-in-cheek adventure through the metaverse available on amazon kindle paperback and as an audible audiobook links in the description to this video